This is the electronic photonic processor chip. This chip contains over 70 million electrical transistors and 850 integrated photonic devices. The chip floor plan is divided into several distinct regions. On the bottom of the chip, we have a dual-core RISC-V instruction set architecture processor. On the right side of the chip is a 1 megabyte memory array. The left side of the chip consists of the electronic photonic transceivers used by the processor and memory array, as well as independent test sites for photonics development. There are two sets of electronic photonic transceivers. One set is connected to the processor and the other set is connected to the 1 megabyte memory array. Each set has two transmitter banks and two receiver banks, with each bank containing 11 transmitter or receiver sites. There are hundreds of these sites across the chip, and the entire chip is 3 millimeters by 6 millimeters. This is the lab setup we use to demonstrate the optically connected memory system. There are two chip test stations in the setup, one hosting the chip acting as the processor and the other hosting the chip acting as the memory. Each test station has three fiber positioners to couple three fibers to the chip. One fiber brings in continuous wave laser light to couple into the transmit site. A second fiber couples light out of the output of the transmit site, and the third fiber couples light into a receive site. The chip is mounted on a chip board, which plugs into a socket on an adapter board. The adapter board plugs into the motherboard created using the control FPGA. A microscope overlooking the chip enables precise fiber positioning. The chipboard has a selective substrate removed chip mounted in the center. It provides all electrical connections to the chip, such as power and control signals. This picture shows a close-up with three fibers simultaneously coupled into the chip. A continuous wave laser source split 50-50 by a 1 to 2 splitter provides the optical power for links. The processor to memory link starts from one of the two outputs of the splitter, couples into and out of the processor chip to be modulated goes through an optical amplifier to be amplified, and couples into a receive site on the memory chip to be received. The memory to processor link starts from the other output of the splitter, couples into and out of the memory chip to be modulated, goes through an optical amplifier to be amplified, and couples into the processor chip to be received. This is another view of the setup. For the demonstration, we will be showing the screen from the computer we are using to control the demo. Before starting the demo, I'm going to first introduce what is on the screen. The bottom right shows a live picture of the processor chip under a microscope, zoomed in on a ring modulator transmitter. The microscope camera is somewhat sensitive to infrared wavelengths, so you can see a bit of a blue glow in places where there is light coming from the chip. The transmitter's thermal tuning control circuitry is locked on right now, so the ring resonator is aligned to the correct wavelength. You can see that there is a lot of power currently resonating in the ring from its blue glow. This black shadow here is an optical fiber positioned over a grating coupler to couple light out of the transmitter site. The bottom left screen is an interface that I use to configure the different components on the chip, and the top left of the screen is a terminal which I will use to run programs on the on-chip processor and to display its outputs. I have also launched a link monitoring window in the top right which plots the status of the processor to memory link in real time. This has information on the amount of power illuminating the modulator's drop port photo detector plotted on the green axis, the modulator's heater output power plotted on the red axis, and the ratio of ones and zeros currently transmitted by the link plotted on the blue axis. Now I am going to demonstrate the processor by running some test programs on it. The processor is capable of running arbitrary programs compiled to the RISC-V instruction set architecture. For all test programs that I am about to run, the processor uses its on-chip photonic transceivers to optically communicate to the memory bank on the other chip. The first test I am running is MemTest, which just uses the control FPGA to read and write every memory location in the remote memory bank through a direct memory access protocol. This verifies that we can optically access the memory bank and read out exactly the data values that we have written in. A bit error rate of zero here indicates that this is indeed the case. The next two tests are Hello World programs, which test that the processor can load a program from memory, execute its instructions, and print out text messages to the terminal. The two printouts shown here show that the test is successful. The next test is Stream, an application popular for benchmarking memory performance. This is a more stressful test, as there are a lot more program instructions, heavy use of memory, and many more terminal printouts. 
However, our processor completes it without any problems. Our final test is Teapot Renderer, which is an interactive graphical application where the processor performs pixel shading operations to render a 3D teapot based on the position and color of a light source. The teapot shown here in the top left is displaying the output of the processor. This is again a memory intensive application as the processor must read and write each pixel for the image in the frame buffer located in memory. Through keyboard inputs, I can also change the position of the light source as well as the color of the light source. Both actions cause the processor to render a new image to display. Now, this program is a lot of fun to play with for a while, but let's make things a bit more interesting. I'm going to use the microscope illuminator to change the amount of light shining on the chip, and thus changing the temperature of the chip. Watch the modulator's heater output power as I brighten and dim the illuminator. Under full illumination, which heats up the chip, the tuning controller lowers the heater power to the ring. Under zero illumination, which lets the chip cool to a lower temperature, the tuning controller increases the heater power to the ring. These actions keep the ring aligned to the laser wavelength and consequently to a constant temperature. As a result, the program works perfectly okay. This system is quite robust and I can basically do this forever without it breaking. Now, to show you what happens without thermal tuning, I'm going to use the configuration window to disable thermal tuning control. With thermal tuning control off, the heater power output is now constant and no longer adapts to the changing environment. Now watch what happens when I play with the illuminator. The corruption you see in the displayed image is a result of pixels being lost due to bit errors that occur in the link. And the program appears to have frozen up and crashed in a spectacular fashion. I should note that the illuminator only changes the chip temperature by about one degree, and even this small of a change is enough to cause the system to crash if thermal tuning is not turned on. This concludes the video, and I hope you enjoyed it.